first injury report is out. Also, head coach Doug Peterson speaking today, giving us some insight on the injury news. We'll get that and more with 97.3 ESPN's John McMullen at JF McMullen on Twitter. And he joins us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Break up with your bookie, Harris Resort. And Bally's Atlantic City Wild Wild West are taking bets at their new sports books. Wager today at the book. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. John, if you were a gambling guy, and now maybe you are, I don't know, uh, let's start uh, going down through some of these guys here. Uh, let's go with uh, Jason Peters and Lane Johnson. Are they in? Yeah, they're going to play. Uh, there's no question about that. I mean, I'm surprised as much as anybody uh, with Jason Peters uh, when you hear, hear he tears his bicep. Now, depends where it is, and obviously it's in a good position, and he can play through it. The Eagles claim that there's no risk of further injury, uh, and he's going to play through it. He was out of practice today. Not only, he didn't even miss a practice. He was limited, wow. but, and he was all braced up. Uh, if you look at the entire right side of his body, he's got this big brace on his knee. He's got this big brace on his uh, on his upper arm and the bicep now. But he's a tough guy, and he, he's going to play through it. Lane, uh, I think, is more of a – he did not practice today. He's more of a load management thing because he's dealing with that ankle injury. But the whole plan is to get him ready for Sunday. Uh, so they're not really concerned about – practice when it comes to Lane Johnson. I think he'll work at some point, whether it's tomorrow or Friday. Uh, but you saw against the Giants, if he played in that game, he's going to play in this one. John, uh, there's some uh, defensive tackle stuff uh, with Destiny Vallejo. He was let go. So what's the tea leaves with that move? Well, the tea leaves are uh, he wasn't playing well, and they needed to add a defensive back with all the injuries they have there. Uh, and they decided that was to move the make to make room for a couple reasons. One, he hurt his quad. Uh, so he wasn't probably going to be ready to play this week anyway. Uh, and they waived injured. So as long as he clears waivers, which he probably will, and we should know uh, by 5 o'clock today uh, if he clears waivers, uh, then you can do one of two things. You can put them on injured reserve or, or you can just flat out release them. Uh, and in that case, you, you have to go through an injury settlement uh, and you could bring him back when he's healthy after, I think, a four-week period. Uh, and I think the assumption from the Eagles is that if they need him, he'll be there. So I, I don't think they're concerned about losing him. He wasn't playing well. Uh, they needed a spot, and they're just going to move forward. Haloti Nada was back at practice today uh, in a limited capacity, so he should be available uh, on Sunday after missing two games. And then Trevon Hester, they they like a little bit better. Uh, so I, I think the plan is for Nada to start next to Fletcher Cox, play 20 to 30 snaps, and then Brandon Graham and Michael Bennett will rotate in those pass rushing packages. So uh, it was just a way to get a roster spot, and Destiny had an opportunity, and he really didn't show much production with his opportunity. Um, what is the latest on Tim Jernigan? Because uh, it, it seemed that Peterson said that he's in the picture. He said yes, yes to all the above. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if he's in the picture. He's uh, th This was the first week he could have come back to practice off the NFI list uh, and he's not ready to practice which is not a surprise he was out watching practice in a bucket hat for the first time now I, I'm trying to lock this down I'm not sure if he was permitted on the NFI list to watch practice uh, before today so I think that's why he was out there I don't think it was a a signal that he's going to return soon. Uh, but we, we always talk about guys potentially coming back. And from when he underwent the herniated disc surgery, the, the timetable was about six months, and that would have been later in the season, probably November. So there's a chance if everything goes right, he could be back. But it's not going to be next week 
or even the week after by any stretch. All right, more injury news uh, from the Eagles to Carolina. Let's go to uh, Darren Sproles. Haven't seen him since week one. We're getting to halfway through the season, John. Precautionary, or is this thing still hanging around? Yeah, I mean, hey, hamstrings can be nagging. He didn't practice again, but you're right. I, I mean, you talk about week one, and, and now we're getting into week seven, almost halfway through the season. This is becoming more than a nagging injury, uh, and this is obviously not what he or the Eagles hope for in what should be his last NFL season. Um, I, I thought he would be back this week. This is not a positive sign of that, not being available uh, on Wednesday. There's still some time. Uh, but this is becoming one of those things that sort of raises your eyebrows a little bit and say, what the heck is going on here? Uh, and I think the Eagles have had these issues. I, I mean, if you talk, there's a reason most teams in this league don't sign players that are over 30, never mind 35, 36. And if you've seen the injuries of a guy like Darren Sproles, all the issues with Jason Peters, you kind of understand why. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested, like, so with the running back situation right now, Sproles doesn't seem like he'd be counted on. What did we learn last week, Thursday night? Wendell Smollett, Corey Clement, do we anticipate those guys are now splitting duties? Um, how do you see this running back situation moving forward with, with, with the Sproles unknown? Well, I think what you saw against the Giants will be inverted. Uh, against the Panthers and then moving forward, uh, whereas Wendell played the majority of the snaps and, and Corey uh, filled in from there because they had him on a bit of a kit pitch count, uh, even though Doug Peterson kind of denied that. Uh, other people have said it was the case. Uh, and ultimately, I, I think, as I said, you just flip it. Uh, so when Corey's a full go and they think he's ready, uh, for the full-time load, he'll be the guy getting the majority of the snaps, and Wendell will be the secondary piece. Uh, and then hopefully at some point Darren Sproles mixes in yeah. as the third down back. But right now you can't count on that. Uh, and then sort of Josh Adams in that fourth role. Of, if you remember Kenyon Barner at the end of last season after the injuries, he would get maybe two or three carries here and there. Uh, I think that's the way the Eagles are going to move forward unless they go outside the organization. And I've said it a lot. I, I, hey, the Eagles are, are trying to make moves. They're trying to make deals. They have a number of issues and a number of positions. We just talked about one defensive tackle. I, I think they have bigger needs than running back because I really think Corey Clement is a pretty good player. Yeah. Uh, all right, another injury. Let's go down the list. We're continuing to move. John McMullen's with us here on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. John McMullen Injury Hour. <laughs> uh, Corey Graham, uh, day to day, and that whole safety situation. They brought in a corner yesterday, Dexter McDougal. Do we anticipate seeing him active? I mean, here's another interesting storyline. Yeah, and another guy should have added him 33 year old guy with a hamstring. Uh, and it's the same thing. It's it's now he's day to day at this point, whereas Sidney Jones is week to week, which means Sidney's not playing this week. Uh, and the hope was that Corey could get back on the field, and that would be very helpful because all of a sudden you're down two safeties, and with Rodney McLeod being out and Corey Graham, and that means uh, Avante Maddox has to move up in the nickel package and replace Sidney Jones as a slot corner. And then what are they rotated Rasul Douglas in? That's going to be one of the most interesting things to see. Now that the Eagles have a week to prepare for it, how do they go? Uh, because they do have safeties on the roster. Uh, and, and they do have uh, DeAndre Hall, who they picked up from Chicago uh, when they cut down to 53. Uh, but he hasn't had a lot of experience here or, or playing. They brought Trey Sullivan back up from the practice squad. These are real safeties, and maybe that they have a week 
to sort of game plan with them in the mix, they could go that direction. Uh, but the simplest answer would be if Corey could play. And, uh, again, he missed practice today, so that's not a good sign. All right, John, moving away from the injuries for a second, I want to talk uh, some Carson Wentz with you. So last year in his first four games. He's injured too, by the way. I know. I saw that. So we, we you can touch on that uh, as well. But Carson Wentz through his first four games last year, John, six touchdowns, two picks with a 90.5 passer rating. This year in his first four games, eight touchdowns, one interception, and his passer rating has just skyrocketed after each week, 84, 99, 115, 122 last week. So touch on what the what he's dealing with injury-wise, and then I want you to talk about, are we about to see an explosion here uh, with Carson and possibly an MVP candidate over the next, you know, 12 weeks? I mean, it's a, it's a potential. I mean, I, I think Carson would have been the MVP last year if he didn't get hurt. Uh, I mention that all the time. Uh, I, I Look, I, I, I'm honest. I, I don't think the numbers mean that much because they've exploded yeah. all over the league. Uh, I'm not a, as big a proponent on that, but he is playing at a very high level and, and very quickly coming off a very serious injury before everyone jumps off uh, a bridge. He's just had some back spasms today, so he's going to be fine. But right. uh, it, Yeah, I mean... If he continues to play, and by the way, the Giants game, this is interesting. I, I thought he left some stuff on the field. He made some mistakes. I don't think that was his best game as you go over the film. You, you, you talk about early in the game. You know, in the touchdown to Alshon Jeffrey, that, that's a bad throw. Uh, I, I don't care how anybody shakes it. That's the classic no, 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 yes throw thrown across your body, across the middle of the field. And if that's a good safety, not that Landon Collins isn't, but if it's a good defense, a good team, they're going to take advantage uh, of something like that. And I think everybody knows it. Doug knows it. Press Taylor, uh, I talked to her early this week, knows it. And Carson knows it. So I I think he's playing at a high level. Uh, I think the Eagles' success against the Giants had more to do with them not getting the pre-snap penalties, not getting behind the sticks, and being in good position. Uh, they were great in situational uh, football, third downs and fourth downs, which was sort of a uh, – third downs and red zones, which was sort of a, a, sort of a staple in the Super Bowl season. Uh, so that was all positive. But, hey, I think Carson can play better. Yeah, so do I. It's going to be interesting to see. John, how have the Eagles been preparing for uh, Cam Newton this week in, in practice? I mean, last year he rushes it 11 times, 71 yards and a touchdown, but the Eagles picked him off three times in that game. So what are they doing in practice this week to try and prepare for Cam Newton? Well, Braxton Miller is running the scout team and playing uh, Cam Newton in practice. Uh, it, it's a little bit different, the Carolina offense, because Norm Turner's come in and putting more design quarterback runs back into the offense. Uh, They kind of veered away from that because they thought Cam was getting too banged up. Uh, But Ron Rivera today told us that he'd rather run the football on design runs because he feels on design runs he knows where the hits are coming from. Uh, Whereas you get banged up when you're in the pocket and you're sort of getting those blind hits. Uh, so Cam wants to run it. They put it back into their offense, and it's a very unique thing. It's very difficult to stop, especially when the quarterback is six foot five and 260 pounds, and he's bigger than every linebacker you got. He's bigger than every linebacker in this league. He's a very unique guy to deal with, and he's one of those guys you want him to be in the pocket. You want him to throw from the pocket. You don't want him outside the pocket. And you don't want them in third or fourth and short because if it's third and one or fourth and one, they're converting. John McFallen, 97.3 ESPN.com, is with us here. You know, and you just brought up the third down conversion. That was a big difference last week. You know, the third down conversion, I think, what were they, 14 or 15 or something like that. And yeah, yeah. That was something that Doug was asked about today that Zach Ertz said, hey, we're the Eagles again. Did you get the sense and do you get the feel that that offense – 
is moving in the right direction and that this is a good matchup to keep flowing because they went to Carolina last year. They won the game down there. Uh, that was a that was a kind of a hard fought game. I, I thought it was an impressive road win. It was kind of like you know a Thursday night on the road down there. You look back at that season and say that was one that really you know you might have thought, hey, that's a loss on a Thursday night on the road. That game against Carolina really changed their not changed, but was an interesting part of their season. No, I, I thought it was a big win because you're right. I, I mean, generally, if you're going on the road on a Thursday night against a good team, you're going to lose. I mean, history kind of says that in this league. Uh, and the Eagles were able to uh, to come out of there with a victory. So I do think that that sort of gave them some confidence. I, I still think the Jake Elliott field goal was the bigger uh, crux of the season that sort of set them on their way. But you could see different milestones. And I think that was one of them, to beat a good team on the road on a short week. And it kind of told them, that we belong uh, a little bit different this week. I, I think that's you know sort sort of the, what the Panthers are are looking at this. And Ron Rivera said, "Look, we're on the road against the Super Bowl champions. Of course, it's a big game, and that's a narrative we've kind of talked about all year. The Eagles, with possibly the Giants being an, an exception." might get the best punch from just about every team because they're the champions and they're the hunted, they're the target. And people look at them as a big hurdle. And and if you can beat them, that's big for your season. So I think that kind of stuff has, has changed a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what did uh, Doug, um, have to say about uh, losing Tory Smith and, and and you know how that uh, how they've compensated. I thought that was interesting today. Well, they've they've and Gunnar Brewer talked about this too earlier in the week. The wide receivers coach they've they've been forced into a, a committee approach, sort of like what they do in the backfield. And but they don't want to do this. They want to do a committee in the backfield. They don't want to do a committee for a deep threat. And you know Doug pointed out that Tory isn't necessarily the most productive guy in the world, but he did have a knack as a veteran player to draw pass interferences. And it doesn't matter. I got news for you. It doesn't matter where the yardage fits on the statue. If, if you're getting a 40 yard reception or you're getting a 40 yard pass interference, you know, the Eagles are just as happy. Uh, the fantasy <laughs> right. football players might not be as happy, but it means the same to your offense. Uh, and Tory did that a lot last year, and it's been missing, but it's been missing because it's not like the Eagles didn't plan for it. They thought they upgraded. Yeah, I thought they upgraded. Most people thought they upgraded. And Mike Wallace got hurt, and Matt Collins got hurt. And now you don't have that in your offense, and you're sort of stuck with fooling people. You know, when when you hear coaches talk about getting Jordan Matthews deep, that's that that means you're fooling the defense. That's not a guy who's popping the top and scaring the opposing defense uh, with their long speed. And that's I think what is missing uh, with the offense. All right, uh, of course, uh, this weekend, Dallas-Washington. We will dive into that game a little closer with John uh, on tomorrow and Friday's show. we get the NFC East battle. Uh, and, of course, the Eagles take on Carolina. So we'll have all the coverage of those two matchups here on the Sports Bash Live. Don't forget, tomorrow night, live at uh, the Landmark Americana, it's Mosher, McMullen, and Krause from 6 to 8. Uh, one of the best football shows you'll hear as those guys will dissect and break down and throw around all of the topics for Eagles, Panthers, right here on 97.3 ESPN. John, all right, my man. We've got uh, I haven't seen the schedule yet this week, but I know Dallas and Washington play. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on that and some of these other week. I can't believe we're there. Week uh, seven already. Week seven. It's getting late early. <laughs> Halfway through after this week. All right, pal. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Mike.